Hey y'all, this is Richard with Rip One Outdoors. Hey, good to be back with you. We got a new bike here for you today. Uh, this is the Mahogo One Pro. This is one of a trio of bikes that Mahogo has released. These bikes, according to Mahogo, are offering an innovative dual battery system in combined with torque sensor, are producing some excellent results with the range estimate. What I'm gonna encourage you to do is Go to my video description and look at that link. Click on that. Go to the Mahogo website and be sure to check out the Mahogo One. Scroll down and find the comparisons. They have all the range estimates in there and all their data they come up with. I can tell you as far as the bike is concerned, the bike is a very comfortable bike. It's the same quality that we're used to seeing from Mahogo and the same comfort. It's a folding bike. And hopefully I'll provide y'all all the information that you can that that I can. But if I miss something, hey, check it out on that website. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go inside and we're gonna do a, a brief unboxing and assembly video. Then we're going right on out to the field. We're going to the Bay St. Louis and we're gonna ride down there and maybe provide y'all with some information there. Hey y'all, don't go anywhere. Let's tarry into it and let's see what we can find out. Everybody, let's do this unboxing and assembly of the Mahogo One. It's a dual battery smart e bike that's being offered by Mahogo. You can do this. Ah, that was easy. All right, what we got, y'all? Okay, y'all, while we all wasn't looking, I got it out the rest of the way out the box and just taking a look at it here, I just wanted to go over the few things that we have that we got to address as far as the assembly process is concerned. We have to put our handlebar on, mount it, four uh, cap screws, that's all. We have one screw each for the rear and the front fender to attach. The little side wires are there already attached. We have to put the front wheel on, put the seat on, put two pedals on. That's that's what we're gonna be doing. Hey, it's it should be easy peasy, right? Okay, we got our cap screws here. I got it centered up about where I want it. Uh, we'll do some final adjustment on it later. Okay, that looks good. Let's run in the screws. Give them a little check. First thing we do is pull this red spacer out right here. That's for used for shipping purposes for the uh, brake caliper. Then we'll loosen these little screws up holding this temporary bolt here. Okay, we got that little bolt loosened up. We'll just pop it right off. Isn't that pretty? That is the Kenda Silent Endurance tire. And that is a 20 by four and a quarter. Nice, I like that, that gold labeling right there. Look at that tread, ain't that pretty? Pick the bike up. We'll put our keepers on and nut. Same thing on the other side. LED light. We'll plug our wires in now for the light. Each side is marked with an arrow. Just line the arrow up. Simple as that. Okay, we'll install the back fender now. Pretty much the same process. Pedals. One left, one right. Right hand, right hand threads. Left hand, left pedal is left hand threads. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna take the battery out. Get it charged up. 
this just slides right out. You put the key in there and unlock it and slide it right out. Be sure to reach down in there. The reason I know is because I've had one of these bikes before. Reach down in there and pull that foam out, okay? Because it won't go down and make a good connection if you don't. Seat installation. We really shouldn't need any instructions on installing a seat, right? If y'all want to know what it is, that's a 31.6 millimeter diameter. Okay, y'all, real quick, like we're going to put the internal battery in the frame okay and this hinge is a little bit tight but it's just working it a little bit it's getting better good fit It's locked in. There you go. All right, let's put our uh, let's put our main battery on. Got a little groove right here. Okay, y'all. Let's take just a few minutes and let's talk about some of the specs and features on the handlebars up here. Got a we got a very comfortable rubber grip, half twist throttle. But yeah, I love the grips. Logan hydraulic brakes. All right. <clears throat> Seven speed Shimano shifter. Y'all are used to seeing that. Uh, color LCD screen here. We'll talk more about that later. Very nice cable management system. Check that out. It's got a hydraulic fork adjustment and lockout here. Uh, mount here for a, a front basket if you decide to go with a basket. Also up on the front here, they have a they have a basket for the front and a basket for the back. I think they come sold as a set. Yeah, check that out in the Mahogo accessories. The frame is a magnesium alloy. It's lightweight but yet rigid. As far as the crank is concerned, that's a 52 tooth chain ring right there. Folding pedals, Shimano Altus derailleur. It's got the derailleur protector. Good and sturdy brackets here for your rear fender to mount on. A 1428 Shimano freewheel, and that is seven speed. Nice heavy duty rack. Got some. Mountain holes back here where you can mount your rear rack if, if so desired. There's your 750 watt hub motor, 1000 watt peak. The bike has a torque sensor. Got a nice little wheel down here for when you fold it and you're setting it down on the ground. LED tail light and brake light. 65 watt LED headlight. Warranty for this bike is one year for the batteries is two years I would highly encourage you to go to a website and check it check the bike out it has a lot more features and specs than what I'm telling you but the colors it's offered in is silver and this is what they call yellow but it doesn't look yellow to me it looks like a cream color for, or a desert sand color I like to think of it as a desert sand y'all here's a little tool kit that it comes with Comes with some tire patches, or tube patches rather. Little tube of glue. Spoke wrenches and, and levers. And a multi-wrench. Got a little bit of everything there. Everything you need. You could you can actually build this bike with what's on what's right here. Okay, y'all. I've already got the bike connected to the uh, the newest Mahogo bike we have. It's the Mahogo One Pro. Uh, I'm going to show you how to connect, maybe by showing you connecting to the RX 2.4. Okay, so it's, it'd be like doing a new bike. We already have the app installed, and that's the Bike Go app. Okay, uh, got a little sheet that comes with the bike that 
tells you where to go and find the app and how to install and everything. But let me see if I can show you here. So it shows you my the Mahogo One on here. So I'm thinking that if we just add, click that plus sign right there to add a bike. All right, what we're going to do is go to the go to the display. Let's go to the display. Press the power button once. Let's scroll down to where it says Bluetooth. Now we have Bluetooth turned on on our phone. So we hit Bluetooth. There's a QR code. And it's connecting. Pairing your quest. Uh, such and such would like to pair with your iPhone. You hit pair. Allow to receive iPhone notifications, and I'll hit allow. So it just puts up a generic bike here, uh, and we can change that profile bike logo. Here we go, custom bike logo. I just took a picture of the 2.4 out there. Keep current selection. So there you go. Kind of an ugly picture, but that'll work. There we are. It shows you that by, that the odometer is 60.7 miles, and that's exactly what the display shows. 98% on the uh, battery. Yeah. So that's how to that's how to connect a bike. Now you don't have to scan the QR code every time. Once you scan the QR code and you you put those, it, it has that information in your phone. Then the next time you turn this bike on and you hit connect on your app and it will automatically connect okay so there you go i hope that's I hope that'll be a help to you but i really like the app it has a place over here where you can hit go this is for entering a route i haven't got into that yet but i just wanted to show you the basics of it how to connect the app i'll, I'll leave this to you to you guys to put your route and whatever in Okay, everybody, we hope you've enjoyed watching the unboxing and the assembly of the Mahogo One Pro. Hey, we're going to go out on the road now and take a ride and check the bike out, and we'll tell you some more things out there about it. So, hope you all enjoy going to Bay St. Louis. Let's go to the Bay. Okay, y'all, as promised. I told y'all I'd meet y'all out on the road, and here we are. We are in the little town of Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. The locals call it the Bay. It's a cloudy to mostly cloudy day, about 60 degrees. We're gonna get took off and we're gonna talk a few things. Uh, we're gonna get took off and we're gonna tell you a few things, our feelings about the bike and some things that we found out about it. And just make a little journey through the duck pond here. I always enjoy coming around here. I've took, I like to take pictures here. Beautiful place. Let's talk just a little bit about transporting this bike. The bike is foldable. And yes, you can load it into the back of your SUV or your pickup truck or whatever. Folded, you know, in the folded position. But I just wanted to tell you that the weight of the bike is 65.2 pounds without the battery and 81 pounds with the battery so it's got two batteries okay so just bear that in mind when we talk about transport i how i transported it i put it on the back of my rack on my pickup truck 
most of y'all that know me, I carry my bikes on a rack. I think we're just gonna ride right down through town here. And this is a torque sensor bike. And it is my first torque sensor bike to own. So I've been riding the bike, let's see, I've got 20 miles on it right now. I've been riding the bike just trying to get, trying to get, I guess, wrap my head around it, you know. But it didn't take me long to realize that a lot of things that I had been hearing about torque sensor bikes was not true. And I'll try to elaborate on that. I'm just going to have to watch this traffic through here because people will pull out in front of you. Delicious uh, food here. Nice restaurants. Very nice place to visit. And as you can tell, they got the band going out here too. Far as I can, Lord. right around by the harbor. Yeah, when Mohogo told me that they were sending me the bike, I guess you could, I guess I could say that my reaction was a bit apprehensive, if that's the right word, because I haven't owned a torque sensor bike before and I didn't know what to expect. And I guess I had been listening to reviewers that reviewed torque sensor bikes and try to describe that there's people that that try to describe the difference between a torque sensor and a cadence sensor and I listened to that and I guess I thought that what I would be getting was something that I may not be physically fit to ride and I was I was uh I was entirely wrong. See, I'm in, I'm in pedal assist two, and I'm having to apply some pressure here to get up this little hill. But hey, all I would have had to done was just increase the pedal, pedal assist. Now we're gonna run on down through the traffic here. All right, y'all, it's gonna be windy, windy but I want to run across the bridge here. Yeah, we're gonna run across the bridge and I think we got a little bit of wind to our back right now. So coming back, we'll have that wind to our face. And that's what usually affects your battery the most. As I said, I felt like that I was not gonna be physically fit. I'm 65 years old, 230, uh, probably a little overweight. Yeah, but I felt like, you know, I may not be able to do this, but it didn't take me riding, but just a little bit. I mean, I've put 21 miles on it so far, and I can tell you that if I ever had to buy another electric bike, that I would not buy a cadence sensor bike. I would buy this torque sensor bike. That's just how overwhelmed I am by how much fun it is to ride. Now, if you don't want to get exercise at all, then yeah, you probably just want to stick to the cadence sensor. But I pedal everywhere I go. And I'm not finding where I'm having to pedal any harder than what I would on the cadence sensor bikes. Maybe, maybe a little bit, but not much. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run. We don't have hills to climb over here, y'all. It's hard for me to do a hill climb test, but i tell you what I can do. We can climb to the top of this hill here on this bridge, and then down at the other end of the bridge, I got a little hill I wanna climb for you, for you guys. 
And we'll show you that this torque sensor bike climbs just as good as the rest of them. Once we get to the other side, there's some nice little open streets over there, away from all the traffic. And we'll try to do some pedal, show you all the pedal assist settings, okay? So here we go, we're starting up the hill. I'm in pedal assist three. So you see I got some good resistance right now, okay? Our speed is 15 mile per hour. That's about right. So yeah, pedal assist three, we climbed that hill like it was, like it was going out of style. And we just gonna drift on over here. We got one little hill over here to bottom of the bridge we wanna do. Okay, y'all, let's we fixing to go down this little hill. And then we'll come back up it later. Brakes are stopping real good, y'all. That would that would be the braking test right there, coming off of that coming off of that bridge, down that slope, like there. And the brakes come to a, a good stop. Okay, we're gonna do throttle only and pedal assist one. And that's eight mile per hour. We're gonna bump it up, pedal assist two, or power assist two. Throttle only is 12, 13 mile per hour. Power assist, bump up to three. That's 16 miles per hour. Bump it up to pedal assist four. <clears throat> Again, we're on throttle only. That's 21 miles per hour. Now let's go all the way to five. It has five levels of power assist. Power assist five takes us to 25 mile per hour. Yeah, so there you go. Throttle only to 25 mile per hour if your pedal assist is in number five, okay? That's a little different than what I'm used to. It took me some, it took me some riding to get used to it and to try to figure out you know what was going on with it okay let's do pedal pedal assist now here we go pedal assist one and that's at about nine miles per hour pedal assist two and i'm just normally pedaling okay and I'm up to 13. Now, if I pedal harder, it will go faster. So let's jump, bump the pedal assist up to three. Normally pedaling, that's 14, 15. Now up to four. Normally pedaling four is 16 mile per hour. Now let's bump it up to five. It's about 22, about 22 that I can get. Now, if I pedal harder, I can get it up to 25, 26, maybe, maybe 28, but I'll let some of you young folks do that. So yeah, you see the throttle will only react to the current level of pedal assist. And now you see, if I stop pedaling and I'm in pedal assist five, it takes off. Okay, we're going to climb our bridge, back up on our bridge, and head back across. i got to watch this. Got some water right here. i to be real careful. Yeah. All right, let's head on back up the hill. I just bumped it down the pedal assist three. That'll climb any hill around here. Okay, y'all, we'll head back across the bridge. We'll see y'all back on the other side. Okay, y'all, we come off the bridge and now we're gonna run back through the city streets here a little bit. <clears throat> through the streets here, I'm gonna run it in pedal, pedal assist two. Uh, let's talk for just a few minutes about the comfort of the bike. 
and maybe some safety regards. The first thing it, that I would say is the seat is not quite so comfortable for me. I will be replacing the seat. But as far as fit is concerned, the handlebars will adjust and the seat posts will adjust to fit riders from five foot six up to as much as six foot 11. So you got a wide range right there and should allow for a comfortable ride for those, those people. You got a hydraulic front fork as we've already stated that in the specs and features but I will just mention it again that I have not found anything out of the ordinary for the uh, fork. I don't plan to adjust it because it feels real good to me. Another thing that will con concern either comfort or safety would be those those Kenda Silent Endurance tires that I'm sitting on. Yeah, the first time I saw them I said hey low, pro low profile tires and yes, they are low profile, to me they are. But listen, y'all, listen and tell me what you don't hear. You don't hear them tires. All you hear is just a little clickety clack of the, uh, clickety clack of the tires on the grit of the road. You don't hear that roar or humming or anything like that. Very silent and stealthy. 20, I put 25 PSI air in the tires. That feels really good to me. Yeah, if you look at the if you look at the picture I showed of the tires on the close up there one in the shed, you can see they got a lot of rubber to connect with the road. I think that will uh, that will tend to further reinforce the idea of safety. Another thing is the Logan hydraulic brakes. I mean, I could do a braking test, but I don't know. I mean, I showed y'all how it braked when we come off the bridge over there. That, it did pretty good. Speed bump. But all in all, I tell you what, guys, it is a very, very comfortable bike to ride. For me, it is. Uh, I've sh I showed y'all the tail light and the brake light set up there in the shop, and I really like the way they've changed that. Let's talk for just a few minutes about the load capacity because I know that's a big question when people, you know, we mentioned about the size of uh, the, the fit for people trying to find a bike that will fit them. And I mentioned what size that this bike will fit. What about the weight? The stated load capacity is 440 pounds. So, between people and cargo, that's a, that's a pretty good load capacity there. And I will also mention, if I haven't already, that Mahogo has a basket for the front and a basket for the back. Beautiful day, huh? It is. Yeah. Goodness. Yes. Okay, y'all, we're gonna hit the beach path here now. <laughs> yeah, let's do a wrap up on this, y'all, while we're riding down the beach path here. Y'all can enjoy this beautiful blue skies up there. But this bike is, uh, this bike is one of a trio of bikes that Mihogo has put out and in production at this time. And they're estimated to be start shipping on them in March of 2024. Look down in my video description there, there's a link there for Mihogo. And it will take you to the front page there. You'll see the Mihogo One Indiegogo campaign. They got some early bird specials on there, y'all, for people that wish to purchase one or more of the bikes. I'm not going to get into too much on the other bikes. This this model is the 
Mihogo One Pro bike. This is the, if you're looking at like one, two, three, three being uh, the, uh, the one with the most bells and whistles, this one is the middle level, okay? But I can tell you right now, there is a lot to be liked about this bike. So yeah, I'm not going to tell you too much about the about the other bikes. I'm just going to tell you to refer to that uh, link in my video description and check those bikes out. Hey, you may not like the Pro. You may want to go for the Max. If you do, I can't blame you if you do. Let's talk about range for just a minute. Can't, we can't leave out range. You know how we always like to pick at the bike companies about the range. I can tell you what they're saying about this bike right here. They're saying that this bike right here has a range of up to 121 miles. Those, those estimates will vary. I'm always tell you that. And it's based on uh, your weight, the air pressure in the tires. And hey, like I come back across the bridge a while ago, I was in a a severe headwind and yeah that's that's definitely gonna affect your uh, affect your range what Mahogo is saying is they are they're purchasing their batteries from Panasonic and that's that's in Japan and they are Panasonic is the supplier of the Tesla X car batteries so and what they're saying is that with the technology of the batteries these days that they're getting from Panasonic and the technology that goes along with the torque sensor, that these, these range estimates are very reachable. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that with you and Mahogo. And, uh, and, but I'm just gonna tell you, I've seen some early estimates on my riding And I can tell you, I'm really impressed with the range. So there you go, everybody. Hey, go, go down there and check out that link in the description. Look at some of their, uh, look at some of their range uh, estimate claims. I'm telling you, it's, uh, some of them are very impressive. If they can get what they're claiming, hey, it's going to be very impressive. Ease across the street here. You know, when you get to an intersection like this, there's no reason why you can't just throttle right on through it like you, like I normally do. And uh, but again, it's gonna it's gonna matter how fast you throttle through it. Well, definitely matter depending on the pedal assist setting that you're in. See, I just bumped it up to five. That thing shot across there, real good. It's okay, y'all. I'm gonna wrap this thing up and. Just to tell y'all that, hey, we're going to be doing more rides. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be riding this bike and trying to get a, uh, maybe some more miles on it. And we can, we can tell y'all a little bit more about this range estimate. But yeah, we've, we've rode it enough now. We've got 31.6 miles on it. That I guarantee you that we can say truthfully that we love this bike. It's going to be a great asset to rip one outdoors. And our trail riding and riding around the house there, yeah. Very good quality bike. Quality components, UL certified. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of things going for it. So what I'm going to ask y'all to do, if you look down, look down in that description and hit that link, and if you see something you want to buy there from my Kogo, hey, we have a coupon code there for RIP60 that will save you $60. And if that changes, I'll let you know. But if you do use that link to, to purchase a bike, our little channel will get credit for it. And we would appreciate that. And, uh, we actually make a little bit of commission at no extra cost to you. If somebody has a question that they want to get answered, 
hey, send me an email if you do. And it's listed down there in that low, lower left-hand corner of your screen right there. What else? Y'all know the rest of it. Hey, if you find something here that's of value to you, I would appreciate it very much if you hit that subscribe and then hit that like and then hit that bell notification. And until we see y'all out on the next one, thank y'all for watching. Rip one outdoors. Catch you again.